Hey guys, how you going? My name is Dom and today I want to show you how to create this custom context menu using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So it looks like this. It's a clean um, custom context menu with a few items on it. So I can actually um, hover over here and we can see we get some items. So um, these can be linked to a um, external page or um, these can be special functionality that are binded to a JavaScript function. So we're going to create this um, right now. So um, it's actually quite easy, and we can begin by going to a um, to a blank HTML document. So this is the default behavior. If I was to right click here, we get the default system slash browser um, defined context menu. So we're going to actually scrap this one and instead put the custom one there. Okay, so. Um, inside the source code for this um, document, it looks like this. Okay, so not much going on. Um, to get started, we can actually create um, the container for the custom context menu. So down here, let's make a new div and we'll call this one custom-cm. Alright, this will be um, the main container um, for the context menu right there. All right, so um, Inside this one we can go ahead and actually put um, Some sample items inside that so let's make a few more divs here and give it a class of custom dash cm um, Underscore underscore item. So we're going to use the BEM methodology here. Okay, so custom cm item um, For the text we can say item um, number one all right, and do the same thing a couple more times. So item number two and item number three. All right, so um, we've also actually got a divider. So back inside the demo, we can see we have a nice little divider for obviously, um, you know, groups or related items. So um, let's make a divider element right now. So inside the source code, let's make a new div. And we'll call this one custom dash cm um, underscore underscore divider. All right, this will have no text content. We can just copy this item here and paste it below the divider and um, call this one item number four. All right, so um, that's all for the HTML. If I was to save this and refresh, we get that right there. All right, so. Let's add some CSS to make it look like that. Okay, back inside the HTML, let's just hop inside the style tag and add some rules for the custom CM class. So let's target the custom CM class just here. And um, we can give it a background color of um, white. All right, give it a border of um, one pixels, solid and a light gray. Let's give it a box shadow of 1px, 1px, 10px, uh, and then a, um, then a highly transparent um, black of 0 0.1. Um, let's give it some padding on the top and bottom. That'll be 10px and then 0 for the left and right. Um, let's give it a width of 200%. Okay. Um, and that's it for now. So if I was to save this and refresh, we get that look right there. All right, so let's add some styles for the actual menu items. Okay, back inside here, let's add a new um, CSS rule set for the custom CM underscore underscore item class. Okay, let's um, uh, make the cursor as being a pointer to signify that this can be pressed on and also give it some padding of 8px on the top and bottom and then 15px on the left and right, okay? We can also add some hover um, rules to this item. So let's say custom CM on hover, so on hover, we're gonna simply just change the background color to being a light, uh, um, a light gray. So we're gonna make this F8, F8 and F8. So we can save this and refresh and we get that right there. Hover over it, get that nice little effect. Okay, so 
um, let's add some CSS for the actual divider which is hidden in between those two items so back inside the CSS let's add some very basic CSS okay so we can target the custom CM underscore underscore divider class and give it um, a margin of 10 px top and bottom and 0 left and right and also a border bottom of being 1 pixels solid and a light gray alright cool we can save this and refresh and we get um, okay nothing that's alright let's see the issue custom cm divider is that different probably is looks different yep we'll get rid of that e or that i save and refresh okay perfect so we have this this css for the actual um, custom context menu so this will actually be um, positioned absolutely so we're going to use the position absolute css property here that way we can put the um, the context menu wherever the actual mouse is all right, so back inside the CSS, let's add let's add the position to be absolute for the um, the container. Let's also say it's going to start at the top left of the browser window. So we're going to say top at being zero and left at being zero. Okay, so we can now um, save this one and refresh, and now we see we get that positioned in the top left. So, just to demonstrate, um, if I go inside the elements section here of the Chrome DevTools and then add a, um, a style property for this custom CM, if I say display is equal to none, the, um, the menu disappears. So, we're gonna be toggling um, this display property using JavaScript whenever um, the user right clicks on the window and that will obviously hide and show the actual context menu and we're also going to adjust the top um, and the left property of the actual uh, menu to obviously um, you know be in the position of the actual mouse all right so Let's just refresh this and then apply some JavaScript. So first, we might, act, we might actually um, we'll just set the display property of this to be um, none for now. Save and refresh and that goes away. Okay, so time for the actual JavaScript. So back inside the code, inside the script tag, we can begin by getting a reference to the actual custom CM tag. All right, so we can make a new constant and we'll call this one CM, short for context menu, equal to document.query selector. And we're going to select um, the first element with a class of custom CM. So we'll type in dot custom CM inside here. All right, so now that one CM refers to this entire custom CM element. Okay, so now we can define a function which will actually um, show or hide the context menu. So let's make a new function down here and we'll call this one show context menu. This will take one argument um, and we'll call this, um, this parameter show. Okay, um, by default, will make show equal to true all right so this means when you call this function with no arguments um, show will be equal to true by default you can call this by saying show and then we'll put false inside there so inside the function body let's just adjust that display css property of the context menu so we're going to say cm dot style dot display is equal to and then a condition so we're going to say if show is true then we'll make the display property as being block otherwise we can make it none okay so 
if show is true, then block, otherwise none. Okay, so I can now save this and refresh the browser, go inside the console, and then I'm going to call this function. So I'm going to type out show context menu here, and then um, pass in no arguments. If I press enter, we can see it appears. I can do the same thing, this time passing in false, and we get that. All right. You can also just put true inside here, which will then display it. Okay, so we can see how um, this function is going to um, hide or show the context menu. So we can now call this function inside the event listeners for the right click and the clicking. Okay, so inside the JavaScript, let's add an event listener for when the user right clicks on the browser window. So down here, we're going to type out window dot add event listener we're going to listen for the context menu event okay um, for the uh, for the handler we're going to make use of the e which is the actual event instance okay alrighty so the context menu event fires off when the user right clicks on the browser window and we need the actual E, which is actually um, an instance of the actual mouse event. Okay, so if I was to console.log and then say right click inside here, um, I can now save this and refresh the browser and we'll see if I was to right click, we get that in the console. Keep doing it and we get the message in the console. Alright, so we're going to modify the contents of the um, this function to put some logic which will hide, um, sorry, which will show the context menu. But first, we're going to actually prevent the default behavior of the system defined context menu. So um, we can actually call the e.prevent default method right here, and that right there is going to prevent the default behavior. So I can save this and refresh and then right click and we see we get no default context menu and that right there is the prevent default method doing its job okay so down here we can now call the show context menu function so we're going to say show context menu just like that um, I can now save this and refresh and then right click and it appears right there Okay, so let's make it appear where the mouse um, where the mouse is. Okay, so we're going to do this by um, modifying the top and left CSS property. All right. So I'm just also going to console dot log the e. So e is an instance of the mouse event. So I can save this and refresh and right click in the console this right here is going to be e okay if i expand this we can see we have access to um, the property x and the property y and those right there represent the x and y coordinates of the actual right click so we're going to use these two um, to apply to the top and left css property all right so inside the code we're going to modify um, the CSS so we're going to say cm context menu dot style dot top is equal to e dot y alright we can do the same thing for the style dot left property this time being e dot x so I can save this and refresh and then right click and we get that right there. Okay, looking good. However, if I was to click out of it, it doesn't go away. So let's create that right now. We can do this by adding an event listener um, once again to the window. And we're going to say window.addEventListener. We're going to watch for the click event. So a standard click, right? For the function body inside here, we're simply 
going to say show context menu and then false. So we're going to hide the context menu. All right. I can save this and refresh. And now right click, we get that, get out of it, and it goes away. Okay. So um, if I was to actually right click towards the end of the browser, and see it goes off screen and we get a scroll bar. So not good. Um, in the actual demo I showed you earlier, I right click down here, we can see it actually, you know, keeps it in the window. So we're going to, um, you know, put this logic in right now. So um, back inside here, let's just um, head over to those two lines right there. So we're going to put a, um, once again, one of these conditions inside there. Um, we're going to check if the position of the mouse plus the um sorry you know what if the if the y position of the mouse plus um the height of the context menu is greater than the window in a height then we're going to actually limit the um the y property so i'll just actually type this out and then explain it so we're going to say um if the top is um well if the top so if the if the mouse y plus cm dot offset height so offset height is actually going to be um, the height of the context menu if that's greater than um, window dot inner height then we're going to use um, uh, the top value of window dot inner height subtracted from um, the height of the context menu. So cm dot um, offset height. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to use the, um, the default e dot y behavior. So that line is for um, the height and for the y property. So I can save this and refresh, go down here, right click, and we get that right there. So we're just checking once again. Um, if the Y position of the mouse plus the height of the context menu is greater than the inner height of the window, okay, so the height of the window, then we're going to make the, the top value as being um, the height subtracted, um, you know, by the, the height of the actual um, uh, context menu. Otherwise, use the default Y um, property. And we can do the same thing for the e dot x. So um, if the x is more than cm dot offset width this time around, um, more than window dot inner width, then we're going to say once again um, the width of the window. Okay, width of the window minus the width of the actual context menu. Um, otherwise e dot x okay I'll just use the actual text wrap here we see that very long um, statement okay we can save this and refresh this time right click over here and it stays within the actual um, browser window so that's all for the context menu um, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later